Praise the Lord, everybody. Turn around to somebody and say, it's good to be in camp meeting tonight. I feel something very definite, powerful, flowing under this meeting tonight. There is an undergirding of the Holy Ghost. I like what I feel right now in the Spirit. Praise God. About three hallelujahs and we could have an explosion. I'd like to set the record straight tonight. There's a lot of rumors going around. Don't worry, I'm never serious <laughs> when I talk like that. I was telling Brother Fuller at the table last night, I said, I, I, here a while back I had some of our saints standing around me, and I was a very serious look on my face, and I said, you know, I don't know about y'all. I said, but fasting, I said, it really doesn't bother me. Fasting doesn't bother me. There's only one thing that I've noticed when I fast, I have a tendency to get hungry. If it wasn't for that, fasting would be a breeze. There's some rumors going around the country that need to be set straight. Ohio is not a hard place to preach. And I don't know who told it that they should be at this camp meeting. Some folks are trying to tell me that Buckeyes won't praise God. They ought to be here at camp meeting 98. Folks are trying to tell me that the north is cold. You all know by now that your preacher is a southerner. I want you to know the north is not cold. I believe the Holy Ghost is the same in the north, in the south, in the east, and in the west. It comes with fire. And when you get that... Geography doesn't have a thing to do with it. I preached here a while back in Korea. They warned me. They said, now, Brother Huntley, when you get over there, it's not going to be like in the States. They'll just cry, and they'll cry, and they'll cry, but they won't worship. They won't be shouting and running. The first night we were there, my wife, of course, was with me. We preached a camp meeting in Korea. They did everything but jump out the windows. The Holy Ghost is the same. And I'm glad I've got it tonight. How about you? Opening your Bibles and quickly let us get to the Word of the Lord. I want to tell you it's been a privilege to preach to you. Your response has been as good as any place I've ever preached. And better than a lot. And I thank you for your kind response and your encouraging words. I tell you, you folks know how to make somebody feel like a preacher. And I hope you do that to your pastor. I want to tell you, the man that preaches to you week in and week out is the greatest preacher in the world.
Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 11, verse 12. Thank you, Brother Jordan, District Board, and all responsible for this awesome privilege and challenge to be here. I preach a little different tonight than I did last night, and I'll preach again tomorrow night different than I do tonight because I don't believe we ought to do the same thing every night. There's too many different needs that need to be administered and addressed. We want to shout praise God, but we don't need to turn camp meetings into contest just to see how high we can go. I believe we had a breakthrough here last night. Now it's time to take that Holy Ghost experience and do something with it. 2 Samuel 23, 12, 11 and 12. And after him was Shammah, the son of Aji, the Herahite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop. That's the way they always do it. They always come in a troop. Where was a piece of ground Full of lentils, would you say a pea patch? That's what a field of lentils is, a pea patch. And the people fled from the Philistines, but he, talking about Shammah, stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. Shammah stood, and God gave the victory. I want to preach tonight on this subject, and I really feel, I don't know, that there will be a confirmed witness. I wrestled with this message even today trying to to, to preach something else, but I feel the Lord definitely is going to speak to somebody Maybe a preacher, maybe a saint, but I want to preach to somebody tonight on pea patch perspectives. Pea patch perspectives. And Shama stood in a pea patch. I don't care what God has given you, stand in it. Some folks may be standing in a a gold mine. Some may be standing in an oil field. And some may be standing in a pea patch. But if that's what you've got, and that is what God has given you, stand in it. Clap your hands to the Lord and let Him know we're going to worship Him in the Word tonight. And you may be seated. I probably need to, just in one quick moment here, give you a brief definition of perspective. A perspective defined is how you picture or how something is viewed or seen. It is your insight. It is a delight that I am privileged to bring your attention tonight to some of the most intriguing, enjoyable, interesting portions of Holy Writ. And that is the documented adventures, accomplishments, devotion, bravery, loyalty of David's called mighty men. They were a mighty, militant, marching army under the command of David. They are called David's mighty men. These passages of Scripture have long time been some of my very favorites. To read of their heroic actions and deeds. What a story they are. A story from rags to riches. For the Bible said that when they came to David, they were in debt. They were discontent. 
and they were distressed. But they met David the king in a cave. And from henceforth they were called David's mighty men. Men that formerly were in debt, formerly were discontent, formerly were distressed, but they had an experience with the king in the cave that changed their lives dramatically. How many of you know tonight that you are what you are because you met the king in the church? You were in debt. You were in distress. You were discontent. But you met King Jesus, and He became the captain of your salvation. And tonight, you're in His mighty militant marching army. Woo! I want to tell somebody tonight, one of the greatest needs of this hour is that we apostolics don't forget where we came from, what we were, and how we got here. Turn around to somebody and say, you ain't always looked as nice as you do right now. Yeah, you think you hot stuff now. I mean, you smell better than you've ever smelled. You look sharper than you have ever looked. Folks are not afraid to sit beside your church now. There was a time they wouldn't have put their purse anywhere near you. You were nothing but a, a convict, a sinner, a wretch, a vulgar, filthy, lost, hell-bound soul. Till you met King Jesus and He changed your life. Somebody stand up and give Him praise right now. says, and such were some of you. You may be seated. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but I feel in the Holy Ghost it'd do us all good to do so. My Lord. Oh, help me, Lord. I'm going to have to start subtracting already. <laughs> little personal joke. There's some folks here that will know what I'm talking about. I preached about adding on, but we preachers sometimes need to subtract. I want to tell you why some of you folks are discontented, although you've had the greatest experience that man can have. You see, when you first got in the church, you judged everything by you and how you used to be. But after you're in the church a while, you quit judging yourself by the old you. And you start judging yourself by the other people in the pew. If you're not happy tonight, take a few moments and look back in retrospect. You're living in a better house. You're driving a better car. You've got more money in your bank account. You are blessed. And I'm thinking maybe that's the reason when everybody else took off, Shama planted his feet and said it may just be a pea patch to y'all. But before I met the king, I didn't have a pea patch. And I ain't letting no Philistine run me out of what God has given to me. You may be seated. I'm going to give the message away right now. I've come to Ohio to tell you that the Holy Ghost has spoken to me to say that it's time the apostolic Pentecostal church dig its heels in the ground and say, Devil, we're not giving you anything. We're not going to give up anything. What God has given to us, we're going to defend it to the death. I 
going to rally you to battle tonight. I believe this message is foundational for the rapture generation apostolics in a day that is epitomized by compromise, negotiation, mediation, and soothing settlements. It's time for the apostolic church to take a stand. Shama said talking is over. There's no negotiations. There is no such thing as peaceful coexistence. The devil doesn't have a pew at the apostolic church. I said he's got to go. We're going to defend what God has given to us. The climate of the carnal has a way of invading the spiritual. Americans are willing to fight for less and less. And more and more willing to sit at the table of worldwide summits to talk than to defend and fight for what is theirs and what is right. I don't mean to shock you tonight, but Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. If you're going to stay in this church and make it to the trumpet sounds, you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and go to work on the devil. What we need tonight is Shama's P-Patch perspective. When the Philistines swept down in a troop, the mass majority of Israel began to flee. Their feeling evidently was... It's not worth the fight or the possibility of losing your life. Mere numbers tell us you're not going to win. Numbers have never determined our success. You don't have to have a comp you don't have to have a compromising church to have a Holy Ghost revival. It's not how many people, it's how much God. For if God be for us, who then can be against us? And greater is He that is in us. Don't be intimidated by numbers. The spirit was. No one was willing to die for it. To Shama, somebody perhaps whispered, Quit trying to be a hero. You'll end up a zero. Especially the young men I'm preaching to tonight. Get your sissy ways out of your life. Get your limp wrist ways out of your life. Get a backbone like a solo. Stand up to the devil and say, we're going to have revival. We're going to shake our city. We're going to see a move of God. I say it's time to dig your feet in and say, I'm going to stand here. I'm not running. I'm going to stand here. Perspective number one. And I'll preach on about three of them. The first perspective 
that Shama gives to us is this. Shama knew something the cowards didn't know. He knew something the chickens didn't know. And that is this. If you will stand for God. God will stand for you. Pastors, don't let a few dollars cower you into a corner. Don't let a tithe and envelope whip your standards out of your heart. Don't let a few carnal folks back you up in what you believe. If you'll stand for God, God will stand for you. I feel this in the Holy Ghost right for Ohio tonight. Some of you may be stuttering a little bit. Some of you may be staggering a little bit. Plant your feet down like Shama and say, I'm going to stand here. Listen to the reading of the Word of the Lord. I want to say again, if you will stand for God, God will stand for you. I want to preach tonight to the pastors. I want to encourage somebody. Yes, I've had a few folks to leave our church through the years because they were looking for a blue light, bargain basement, discounted, marked down, compromised apostolic church. But anybody that's left over standards, God's brought me somebody else that loved truth and supported the church better than the compromisers. Besides that, I'd rather have a one God apostolic truth lover that was poor as Job's turkey than the wealthiest man in town that didn't want to live for God. Because my objective is not money. My objective is revival. Listen. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Alexander the coppersmith. Paul speaking. He said, Alexander the coppersmith. Did me much evil. He did me much evil. The Lord reward him. According to his works. God's going to take care of him. Go ahead. Of whom? Hey, I said God's going to take care of him. <laughs> Praise God. Of whom? I don't need to worry about Alexander. God will take care of him. I said, folks that get in your way, God's going to take care of them. Folks that try to hinder revival, God's going to take care of them. Folks that try to stop the truth, God's going to take care of them. Folks that don't want to line up, God's going to take care of them. Read. Of whom be thou ware also. Go ahead. For he hath greatly withstood our words. That's a key word right there. He hath greatly withstood our words. Alexander withstood. Remember that. Withstood. Read. At my first answer, no man stood with me. At my first answer, no man stood with me. Nobody stood. But all men. Oh, oh, let me preach right there. (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead. Ain't nobody likes to preach when nobody stands. Paul said, when I got through with my first message, it was all sitting on me. Nobody stood with me. But hold on. Sometimes it don't matter what y'all doing. Read. But all men forsook me. Go ahead. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. Go ahead. Notwithstanding. Not withstanding. The Lord stood with me. And if all of y'all sit down, it's all right if the Lord will stand with me. Woo! 
Paul said, Alexandra withstood me, but God stood with me. It doesn't matter who withstands me, as long as God stands with me. As long as God stands with me. Shout it. If you'll stand for God, for God. God will stand for you. God will stand for you. Hebrews 1 and 3. If you will stand for Jesus, Jesus will stand for you. Hebrews 1 and 3. Who be in the brightness of His glory. Speaking of Jesus Christ, who be in the brightness of His glory. And, and Superintendent, the... bring your chair right out here, please, and sit right there. Closest thing to God I see around here. <laughs> Read. And the express image of His person. This is speaking about Jesus. Go ahead. And upholding all things by the word of His power. Go ahead. When He had by Himself purged our sins. Did it by Himself. Go ahead. Sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. When He did the work of atonement, He sat down. Acts chapter 7, verse 54. Stephen stood for Jesus. Read. When they heard these things, go ahead. They were cut to the heart. Go ahead. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Go ahead. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, being full of the Holy Ghost, he took a stand. Can I reflect on last night? Being full of the Holy Ghost, what do you think was wrong with Stephen? I said, if he's full of the Holy Ghost, what do you think was wrong with him? I think he was drunk on the Holy Ghost. He had Holy Ghost anesthesia. He wasn't feeling nothing. And when you take a stand for Jesus, two things are going to happen. Read. Looked up steadfastly. He looked steadfastly to heaven. Read. And saw the glory of God. Well, you're going to see three things. The glory of God when you take a stand. Read. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Now, did you miss a phrase? Or did it... I don't know. Doesn't the Bible say in there somewhere that the heavens were open? Please, come on. It's what? the next verse. Oh, I got ahead of myself, did I? Well, read it, please. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open. I... See the heavens open. When you take a stand for Jesus, the heavens are going to come open. Hallelujah. Read. And the Son of Man. And I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Standing. Hebrews said he was sitting. But when Stephen stood, Jesus got up. I said, if you'll stand for him, he'll stand for you. And David said, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Church, it's time to take a stand for God. First Samuel chapter 16 and 11. Samuel was sent to fetch a king from among the sons of Jesse. Seven of them, heaven's perfect number, passed by. But there wasn't one in the seven. It was the eighth boy. Eight in the Bible is the number of new beginnings. And when Samuel saw the seven sons of Jesse come by, he felt nothing. He said, now I know I didn't miss God. I know God told me there was a king here. Woo. Let me just throw this in in passing. You whole missionaries, 
You may have men pass through your church. Number one comes through, he leaves. Number two comes through, he leaves. Four, five, six, seven. None of them stay and you don't feel nothing about it. But if God's told you that there's some kings and priests in that city, you stay there because there's somebody he's going to anoint with the Holy Ghost and he's going to use them in this last day. Here's what Samuel said. Is there not another son? They said, yes, there's one more. You wouldn't be interested in him. He's out watching the sheep. He said, whoa. Send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he come thither. What Samuel was saying is this. We are going to stand until the king comes. I want the devil to hear me in Ohio tonight. There's some things we're not going to sit down about. We're going to stand for one God. We're going to stand for baptism in Jesus' name. We're going to stand for the Holy Ghost evidence by speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. We're going to stand for holiness. We're going to stand for apostolic worship. We will not sit down on those things until the King gets here. Matter of fact, let me just say to some of you, if you're hanging around the church waiting on the price to go down, you got a long wait. Come on, pastors, jump to your feet and shout, you got a long wait. We're not running any blue light specials. We're not going to discount discipleship. We're not going to mark down apostolic Christianity. I read a verse of Scripture the other day, and I saw it in a way I've never seen it. Get Hebrews 10, 25. And read it. I think that's the right one. If it ain't, we'll do something else. We'll just stand here. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That's it. (laughs) That's it. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Don't learn how to miss church. Don't use every little old pet excuse under heaven to stay home. My cat's having kittens. My relatives might come in. Read. Okay. As the manner of some is, but exhorting hey, one another. As the manner of some is. Church, Israel got in real trouble because they wanted to be like the other nations around them. Hey, you can find 45 churches in your city that don't care whether you come to church or not. They have no standards. You can always find somebody that believes less than you believe. But he said... As the manner of some is. Read. But exhorting one another. But exhort one another. Turn around to somebody and say, you ought to be in every service you possibly can make. Read. And so much. The and more. here it is. And so, so much. So much. The more. Read. As ye see the day approaching. The closer we get to the coming of Jesus We need more church, not less church. (laughs) 
so much the more. If we've ever lived holy, so much the more. If we've ever been committed, so much the more. If we've ever been faithful, if we've ever had standards, so much the more. if we've ever been on fire, so much the more. it's not time to back up. It's not time to sit down. It's time to stand. You may be seeing it. Let me quickly move. Perspective number two. Shammah had this understanding. The Philistines cannot take anything I've got except I give it to them. The devil cannot take anything you've got. His only hope is that you will willingly Surrender it to Him. Hey, listen to this. Oh, dear Jesus, help me right here. Hey, did you know that if the... Somebody's here tonight saying, Oh, I think the devil's going to kill me. It's going to come to nothing. He's going to shut us down. He's going to squash us. He's going to put his thumb on us. He's going to wipe us out. Hey, let me tell you something. If the devil could have killed you, he would have done it a long time ago. If... The devil could have conquered this apostolic church, Brother Shira. He would have already done it. But he knows, and I know, this church is too hot for hell. This church is too hot for hell. You may be seated. Let me hurry on. Listen. I want to attack a principle that the devil has put in your mind to cause you to be afraid when you don't need to be afraid. Follow me tonight, assembly. I will give you a statement, one word. You will respond with the equivalent opposite. Like so. Out. Buckeyes are brilliant. Down. Go out dark. Now we're getting close to the trap. I'm warning you, and you're still going to walk into it. Watch carefully. God. See, I told you. That I was going to trap you. We were playing a word game of opposite equivalence. And when you hear the word God, the devil has brainwashed you to believe that he is the opposite equivalent. There is no opposite equivalent to our God. You may be seated or stand up, whatever. Romans chapter 8. You're all right. You're going to read it. Romans chapter 8. A Bible coming apart means a man's got his life together. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. Nay. Go ahead. Are you... Nay. Yeah. Yea, I say nay. <laughs> In all things. In all things. We are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Through Him that loved us. Through Him that loved us. Read. For I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. That neither death. Death. Nor life. Life. Nor angels. Angels. Ho. Ho. Angels. Angels. Apostolic Pentecostals. Let me remind you. The devil 
is an angelic region. And Paul said angels cannot separate us. The only hope the devil has is that you'll quit. The only hope the devil has is that you'll stop. But it's time to dig into the pea patch and say we're going to stand here.